Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about properties of pure substances. Now I'm sure we all have a good idea of what a pure substance is, but I'm going to try and go a little bit more in depth so we have a better understanding by the end of the video. Now a pure substance is a substance that has a fixed chemical composition throughout. It's important to note that a pure substance might be composed of more than one chemical. So for example, helium is a pure substance, right? But water can also be considered a pure substance. Water is made of both hydrogen and oxygen. So that can also be considered a pure substance. It's also important to note that a pure substance can also be in more than one state. So ice water, for example, is an example of a pure substance. Ice water has both solid water and liquid water inside of it. So it's, it's still considered a pure substance. Now, um, I'm gonna give you guys some vocabulary that I want y'all to know what I'm talking about. If I say things like compressed liquid or superheated vapor or a saturated liquid gas mixture, I want you guys to know exactly what I'm saying and, and not be confused. So if I talk about a compressed liquid, I'm talking about a liquid that has not yet undergone boiling, right? This liquid is not in saturation, as, as you're going to see in the next example. That brings me to the term saturation. When I say something is undergoing saturation, I'm talking about boiling. I'm not talking about the type of boils you have on your face. <laughs> um, I'm talking about like boiling, like, you know, we boil water on a kettle and it turns into steam, right? or it turns into hot water and then you can see steam coming out of it. That's an example of like saturation. And in saturation, we're gonna find that we have more than one phase going on sometimes. Um, if I talk about a superheated vapor, I'm talking about a substance that has completely undergone boiling and finished boiling. So it's no longer boiling and it's, it's completely a gas. It's, it's, it's an everyday gas that we know. So that's what I'm talking about when I say a superheated vapor. Now I'm gonna draw something for you guys called a TV diagram. The T stands for temperature and the V stands for volume or specific volume. Now what we need to know with this is that this is temperature, this is volume or specific volume. Something, I'm gonna draw like an example of, let's take water as an example, right? Actually, you know what, first I'm gonna talk about this. To give us more of an idea of compressed liquids, uh, saturated liquid gas mixtures, things like that, and superheated vapors, I'm gonna take the example of water, right? Let's say water at one atmosphere. I'm gonna keep the pressure constant, but I'm gonna vary with the temperature. So let's say my T for temperature, by the way, this is a unit of pressure, um, atmospheres. So if I say my temperature is, let me start off by saying my temperature is less than 100 degrees Celsius at one ATM, right? I'm gonna have a compressed liquid. And this is because at one ATM, <coughs> Water's boiling point, or the saturation temperature for water, is 100 degrees Celsius. So if it's below that 100 degrees Celsius at 1 atm, it's not going to boil. If I now move on to say that my temperature is equal to 100 degrees Celsius, a few things can be going on here. I can either have a saturated liquid, which is like the water has just began boiling, right? And the first drop of liquid has just started boiling, right, into a gas. I can have a saturated liquid gas mixture or a saturated mixture as I might call it. And that's where you have some liquid and some gas inside. Or I could have a saturated vapor. And that's where the last drop of water is just about to evaporate. I mean, it's just about to boil into a gas, right? Now, if I'm at one atmosphere and I say that my temperature is greater than 100 degrees Celsius, I have a superheated vapor. This means that the, the, the substance, the water in this situation, is totally uh, gas. There's no liquid left. So I just wanted us to know that. Now I'm going to draw that TV graph I was talking about. Now, I'm plotting temperature against volume or specific volume, right? Take your pick. 
Now, based on what I just described, right? Let's describe any phase changing substance. Water isn't the only phase changing substance. I can give you, there's something called refrigerant 134A. I might substitute this by saying R134A, but that's just as valid of a change, phase changing substance as water is. So you're gonna get something like this. Now what, what's going on here? Now, the water, I'm heating it up, right? As I first start, let's say I start with a liquid, a compressed liquid, right? I'm heating that water up, right? As I'm heating it up, what is increasing? Both the temperature and the volume are increasing at this point in time. When it's a compressed liquid, right? So this is the compressed liquid state. I'm just gonna write this to abbreviate. That's the compressed liquid right there. Now when it gets to this point right here, right? Where it just starts boiling, right? First of all, let's look at this line. What's, what's a constant here? Temperature is a constant, right? While volume is still increasing, right? Our specific volume. So what's gonna end up happening is this is gonna be our saturated liquid point. Now, after this thing reaches saturation, it doesn't just stop. It doesn't just keep increasing in, in temperature. It stays constant at temperature until it reaches, now here we're gonna have boiling, right? Boiling is gonna take place and we're gonna have a saturated mixture. From here on this straight line, we have a saturated mixture. And this is just where the liquid, compressed liquid water has become a, a superheated vapor. So you're gonna have, part of it is gonna be a superheated vapor, part of it is gonna be compressed liquid. Now, once we reach this point right here, this is gonna be our saturated vapor. This is the point where, as I said, the last drop of water is just about to boil. So that's, that's what we know is going on here. Now this part, intuitively, we can say is a superheated vapor. Now keep this graph in mind. We can do this to, to remember that this is a constant pressure line, right? Now let's say I were to choose a, a pressure that I'm going to analyze water at. Now drawing that same constant pressure line, I'm not going to specify every, at every single point what's going on here because you guys already know. So let's say I chose to do this. Right, let's say I choose that P to be one atmosphere. Now let's say I choose a slightly higher P, right? I'm going to get, I'm going to get a graph that looks something like this, right? Let's say that's two atmosphere. Or to be honest, just keep in mind that it's higher than one. Now let's say I keep doing that. I'm gonna get something that looks like this, something that looks like this. And you guys can sort of get the point, right? If I fill these in, right, I'll get something that looks like this. And it sort of makes like a dome. Once we can connect these points, and excuse my drawing because it's not to scale, but we can sort of get a type of dome. And we get something that looks like this. Now intuitively, based on what I have just said, we can see that this line is the compressed liquid line, right? This point is our saturated liquid point. This is the area of a saturated mixture. This point is a saturated vapor, and this is a superheated vapor. Now what's going on here? On this side of the dome, we have a compressed liquid. This line denotes a saturated liquid. Now, anytime we're inside of the dome, we're gonna have a saturated mixture. This saturated mixture just means that we have liquid and vapor inside. This is the saturated vapor line. <coughs> and then we 
have the superheated vapor area, everything on the right side of the dome. Now, you might be asking what happens at this point right here. What's going on? This is something called the critical point. That's just where the phases are, are sort of indistinguishable. So, I mean, just keep that in mind. It doesn't come into play too much. Well, at least I, I don't think it's gonna come into play too much, but just keep that in mind. It's something called the critical point. Now, I wanna show you guys something else. If I'm to draw something called a PV diagram, right? I just drew you guys a TV diagram where I was plotting temp temperature against volume or specific volume. Now I'm plotting pressure against specific volume. Now, what we're gonna get here is something that looks sort of like this. Now what's going on here? Remember I have a constant temperature line, right? Just as I had my constant pressure line before, now this becomes the constant temperature line because I'm plotting pressure against volume. Now, what's going on, this shows you that as you're at a constant temperature, as you decrease the pressure, your substance wants to start boiling. So now, if I'm to do that same sort of arrangement that I did before, right, I'm gonna end up getting something like this. Let's say I took at a lower temperature, right? It should actually come like this. And at an even lower temperature. An even lower temperature. And you guys get the point. So we're going to end up having something like this. And then we can connect the dome. Excuse again, my, my drawing is not to scale, but it looks something like this. All right, it's just a dome, basically. Just keep that in mind. So we can see that temperature and pressure are sort of opposites. Keeping the temperature the same and decreasing my pressure causes my liquid to boil. Keeping my pressure the same and increasing the temperature causes my liquid to boil. So it's sort of the same thing. Now we're gonna sort of get into something called um, quality, right? Just to give you a sort of brief summary, quality is just sort of, it favors your vapor over your liquid, your compressed liquid. And by that I mean, quality is basically the percentage of, of superheated vapor that you have in a mixture. Generally, quality only comes into play in a, in a, in a saturated liquid va uh, vapor mixture. I don't know, I can't talk. <laughs> but it only comes into play there, really, because what do you think your quality is gonna be for a compressed liquid? What percentage of superheated vapor do we have in a compressed liquid? Zero, right? What about at, at, at our point of um, where it's like a saturated liquid? What do you think the quality is gonna be? It's gonna be zero, right? And, and quality, you can say like, like 0%, right? As we move here, it's gonna increase from zero to 100% when it reaches the saturated vapor state. And we're gonna then have a superheated vapor where the quality is always gonna be. Like, it's, it's, quality doesn't really come into play there. So stay tuned and we'll learn a little bit more about this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you.